Good evening, everyone, at Praise Chapel Revival Oxnard. This is Pastor Johnny Montillo, and I am so glad that you are joining us tonight for our Wednesday midweek service. My hope and my prayer is that tonight's service touch you in a mighty way, allow you to experience growth and deeper intimacy in the Lord Jesus Christ. As always, I just wanted to thank our, the shepherd of our church tonight, Pastor Mondo Carrillo, for all that him and his wife, Sister Veronica Carrillo, do for us in the body of Christ. Keep them in prayer and keep their family in prayer also. If you get a chance tonight, take some time to navigate to our webpage, Praise Chapel Revival Oxnard, where you see links to our Facebook page, links to our YouTube page, and links to our digital tithe and offering website, and also uh, links to upcoming events. So before I begin tonight, let us just open up in a brief word of prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, because you alone are great, mighty, and wonderful. In you and through you, you do great and awesome, mighty things for us and through us, Lord. It is my prayer tonight, Lord Jesus Christ, that you already begin to touch those who are in attendance virtually tonight, that you begin to already impart into their spirit, a spirit of learning, a spirit of receptiveness, and a spirit, Father God, of conviction to change things that need to be changed. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray tonight that as we enter into your word that you will remind us always that we should be relying on you and that you will never leave us nor forsake us and that we can always be assured that you will be with us always. Holy Spirit, use me tonight. Let this service be your service and let it not be our own, but rather let it be of you, through you, and for you, Holy Spirit. And I pray right now, Holy Spirit, already as those who are listening right now that you already begin to touch them also. So lead us tonight, guide us tonight, and bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Tonight, I wanted to talk to you about how God never leaves us hanging, how Christ never leaves us hanging. It's generally known that at times of difficulty and in times of troubles that we can often forget that we have a Lord and a Savior who will never leave us hanging but rather draws closer and nearer to us in times of difficulty. When we encounter obstacles, when times get tough and when we are often rebellious or sinful and even when we need strength, we can often feel so overcome by the situation that we feel abandoned, are left alone, are left hanging even though Jesus Christ always reaches out his hand to us in deliverance and forgiveness and guidance and in leading. In our first verse tonight, it comes out of Romans chapter 8, verses 38 through 39. Very common verse, and it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In that verse right there, you can see that nothing can separate us, that we'll never be abandoned, that we will truly never be left hanging. Yet oftentimes, why do we feel as though we are abandoned in the obstacles? Why do we feel as though we are abandoned in the situations? How could we feel that way with a promise like this that nothing can separate us from Christ's love? But I believe at times we can feel abandoned or far off because we forget promises like this. Because we are not reminded during those times or we don't rather remember during the times of difficulty, trials, missteps, or bad actions. That we have promises like this that should remind us that we are never going to be left hanging but we have a God that reassures us that He is with us always. During difficult times when we feel our sin is too deep or when we don't get the strength we need right away, we can often feel persuaded that God is absent or, or that He just doesn't care. We can feel a persuasion during times of difficulty, a bad persuasion if you will, that tells us during times of difficulty that God has forgotten to us. And that's something we need to challenge and we need to battle through because the truth of the matter is, is that Christ never leaves us hanging. And seasons or moments of trials or missteps and difficulties, sometimes we can feel that God has stopped moving or, or, or that He stopped working in, in, through us, and for us. 
We can feel that he's not moving at all. We can not even feel his presence. But one thing is for sure that I have to remind you or actually press into your spirit tonight is that God is never inactive. He is always active, moving and doing something even when we feel that he is not. See, that's what happens when we go through obstacles, trials, circumstances, and missteps, and we feel far away, we often feel that God is not active. But one truth, and this is the truth that we should hold on to, is that especially in the times of obstacles, especially in the times when we need deliverance, especially in the times when we are going through rough seasons, God is more active than ever. One truth and promise that we need to take to heart is that He never leaves us hanging, and He always reassures us that He is ever-present and cares. Open your Bibles, if you will, tonight to Matthew chapter 11, and we'll be going through verses 2 through 5. And the verse reads, John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all the things the Messiah was doing. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? Jesus told them, go back to John and tell them what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, and those with leprosy are cured. The deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. You see, when trouble occurs, when times of difficulty occur, and we need a deep assurance that Christ is working, that Christ is doing miracles, that Christ is still active and never leaves us hanging. It's assurances like these. It's moments like these in the Bible that give us the full assurance that we need. Because like John, when an intense obstacle and difficulty take place, we need to be reassured that we haven't been left hanging and that the trouble is never in vain. I find this verse so amazing because during a troublesome time, during a difficult time, here we have John the Baptist in prison and soon he is about to be martyred. He's about to be killed for serving and proclaiming the good news. He's about to be killed. And during that time, all he's asking for is reassurance. I'll tell you what, in the difficult times that we go through, in the difficult places that we enter, in the times of trial, in the moment, in the seasons where things get rough, we can be reassured that we are not walking and speaking the gospel in vain. That we can be reassured that we have a Lord and a Savior who will never leave us hanging in difficulty, but will reassure us in those moments. It must have strengthened John so much. It must have inspired him and brought him peace to his spirit to hear that Christ had come. You see, even in the troubles situations, Jesus was reassuring him that he wasn't alone. Jesus was reassuring him that the trouble he was going through had a plan and a purpose, and it had a reasoning. That same promise of reassurance is also for us during the troublesome times we face. See, we aren't going to be left alone without a reassuring word from the Savior. We aren't going to be left alone in our troubles and our obstacles without a reassuring word that miracles are still occurring, that deliverances are still occurring, and that we always have a Savior who is there with us and will never leave us hanging. One thing to note is that even when we are rebellious and wayward or, or even when we are being sinful, even then, the Savior never leaves us hanging because He loves us enough. He loves us enough to bring us to a moment of redeeming, redemption, and reconciliation. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to Jonah. And we'll begin in chapter 1, verse 17. And this is after Jonah had become rebellious and tried to walk away from the calling of the Lord, and he was thrown into the sea. And the verse reads, Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And we'll go to chapter 2, verse 1. It says, From the inside of the fish, fish Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. That's amazing, isn't it? That even in rebellion even in trying to run away from God, that God provided a way for Jonah to get into that moment of redemption, to be in reconciliation, to finally lay it all out and pray to the Lord his God. You see, we can often feel farther, further, and distant from the Lord during our time of sin. 
It's natural and it occurs that when we sin or when we misstep, we feel further and farther from God and we feel as though he's forgotten us and that he wants nothing to do with us and that he's just going to leave us hanging in our rebelliousness. But here's the fact of the matter. Even then, even in the missteps, even in the sins, even in the bad behavior, even then God doesn't leave us hanging. He still desires and loves us enough to make a way for reconciliation. Just like Jonah, God at times can provide the proverbial big fish for us, the big moment for us, the moment of reconciliation, the moment that drops us to our knees in, um, in doing and seeking reconciliation. He brings us to a moment of repentance. He brings us to a moment of confession. And he brings us to a place, finally, where we can say, God, we know that you love us enough, even in our sins, to forgive us. And then we can make the necessary changes. So that way we don't make those same missteps. You see, even when we misstep or even when we trip, he's always there. He's always there. He's there when we rebel and he's there when we misstep to bring us to a place of true redemption and reconciliation. And I believe that is the biggest and most beautiful sign of love from the Savior that we can ever receive. Even when we are far off, he provides a way back to reconciliation and never leaves us in the sin, never leaves us in the misstep, but rather guides us in and through it to a place where we can finally realize that we have a Savior who loves us and cares for us, and we won't make the same missteps ever again. One thing remains true, that even if our faith wavers, even if we grow fearful at times, and even when fear overcomes us, He never leaves us hanging. Rather, He lifts us up and guides us back to a bigger, bigger, and greater, deeper faith. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to Matthew chapter 14 and we're reading out of verses 26 through 31 and this is when the disciples see Jesus walking on water it says when the disciples saw him walking on the lake they were terrified it's a ghost they said and cried out in fear but Jesus immediately said to them take courage it is I don't be afraid Lord if it's you Peter replied tell me to come to you on the water come he said Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? It's no surprise that oftentimes our faith will dwindle. Oftentimes when we should have a rooted faith, we become shaky or rocky at times. And this happens predominantly because of fear, fear of failure, fear uh, uh, um, of not receiving what was promised, fear of sinking just like Peter, if you will, fear of not making the cut. And when our fear lacks sometimes, we feel that we aren't good enough or we feel like I just said that we can't make the cut. But the truth is, even though when fear creeps in and our faith may not be at its best, he still lifts us up just like he did with Peter and reminds us that we can always have strength and faith by his hand. You see, he didn't scold Peter in that moment. What he was doing was it was using it as a teachable moment. And he was telling Peter, you don't have to doubt. You don't have to have a little faith. You can have a big faith that can be trusting in him, that can trust in him. And even when the winds are raging, if we keep our eyes focused on him, we will be faithful, we will be true, and we will not doubt. You see, he won't let us sink in our fear. And he won't let us sink in a moment where our faith lacks, but he will reach out and catch us and never leave us hanging. He caught Peter before Peter sank. And just like he caught Peter before Peter sank, he'll catch you before your faith takes a huge dip or before fear takes over. And that's something key to note, that he never leaves us hanging even when our faith is taking a hit or even when fear seems like it's knocking at your door. See, we have a loving Savior who never, never leaves us but rather uses moments where we lack in our faith or uses moments where we have fear to teach us not to doubt and to have a strength in faith. 
oftentimes when the difficulty is thick and there seems to be no way out, we can feel that the impossible situation, in the impossible situation rather, that the Lord won't come through, that he'll just leave us hanging, that he'll leave us high and dry, that he'll abandon us. But here's the fact of the matter, is that no matter how difficult the situation is, no matter how, if it seems there's, it's impossible or there's no way out, He never leaves us hanging. He delivers us, and in those moments, He creates testimony. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 17 through 20, it talks about how the apostles were placed in jail. And we begin to read in verse 17. It says, Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They became jealous about what the apostles were doing. So they arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. What an amazing moment. The apostles are, are in a prison. They, they, they've been in an impossible situation. They can't break the chains by their human effort. No, they're going to need a supernatural, supernatural undertaking to get through those things. And God doesn't leave them high and dry in the prison. No, God doesn't leave them high and dry in jail. He sends an angel of the Lord to open up the jail and bring them out. You see, when our backs are against the wall, just like the apostles were in this moment, when it seems like there's no getting out of a situation, Christ doesn't leave us hanging, but rather He delivers us and He sends a supernatural, impossible-breaking, chain-breaking, no way of explaining means to get us through the impossible situation. And when he rescues us, we not only have a reaffirmation that he never leaves, but now we can testify to others that he never leaves, that he's always with us, and that he's always there. I love how the angel of the Lord at the end of that verse says, and then tell all the people about this new life, this new life. Tell all the people, proclaim it to all the people that Jesus Christ will never leave you hanging. Proclaim it to all the people that you have a deliverer in God. Proclaim it to all the people no matter when our backs are against the wall or no matter how thick the situation is, that Jesus Christ won't abandon us, but we can be reassured about this new life, about this new way. He won't leave us hanging in the impossible situation. He's going to be there to bring you through and to bring you out of whatever situation you are going through because he never leaves us hanging. He never leaves us nor forsakes us and he always takes the opportunity in an impossible situation to remind us that we should just be relying on him and that there is no situation that is impossible for him and that he will always come through and never leave us abandoned or hanging. Even though Jesus Christ left in the physical, even though he departed in the physical, he took moments to reassure us that no matter that he is leaving in the physical, that he will still always be there. Before he departed in human form, Christ commissioned us to make us disciples and, and to teach and to obey. And as many of you know, when we walk in this commission, things become difficult. Trials will occur, difficulties will occur. We'll be attacked at times by the enemy. It's a difficult time. And during these difficult times and these seasons, he reassured us that he will always be with us. And we get this reassurance out of Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. And this is our final block of verses. It says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And here's where it gets good. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And this is the key note part and the crucial part to remember. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. To the very end. I am with you always. Not sometimes, not part time. Not just when you want him to be there. But he's there with us always. He's there with us in the difficult times. He's there when we misstep. He's there when the storms come. He's there when arguments take place. He's there when you feel that there's nowhere else to turn. He's there 
when you're getting attacked. He's there every moment. I will be with you always. When we walk in Christ, there are sure to be difficult times and seasons where our faith is tested. But he assured us he will never leave us hanging. He assures us that he is with us always. Let the latter part of that verse resonate within your spirit tonight. That surely he is with us. Surely he is always there. Surely he will never leave us. And surely we can be dependent and reliant and hold faith that he will never leave us hanging no matter what. I find it such such a blessing. I find it great and awesome that no matter what we go through, no matter how deep the trial, no matter how difficult the obstacle, no matter how deep the sin, no matter how deep the misstep, no matter how far you feel right now, if you are feeling far from Jesus, He's still there. There with you always. If there's one truth that we can hold on to in the Christian faith, is it we, that we have a Lord and Savior who will never leave us, never abandon us, and loves us enough, even in our mess, even during the tough times, even during the obstacles, to reach out His hand to us and to remind us in His Word that He is always with us and will never leave us hanging. In tonight's altar moment, I ask that if you are going through a difficult situation, if you are going through a difficult time, that you just reach out to Him, that you just cry out to Him, and that you take hold to the truth in remembrance that He will never leave you nor forsake you, that He loves and cares for you always. Let us pray. Though the mountains may be moved into the sea Though the ground beneath might crumble and give way I can hear my Father singing over me It's gonna be okay It's gonna be okay I blamed myself And if I'm honest, maybe I've blamed you too But you would not forsake